Hello guys, welcome to another episode at Sugar MDs by Dr. Ergen. Now, today we are talking about an extremely important topic, how to beat diabetes. Now, if you like this video, remember to give a thumbs up and remember to subscribe so we can get you more videos and you can be notified. Okay, this is going to be an informal conversation with you guys and I'm going to be very sincere with you and I am going to explain what happens and what's happening in my current practice. I have tons and tons and tons of success stories. We call these people in remission. Uh, they call themselves in cured. Uh, whatever you call it, if your A1C is below 5.7, that is an A1C that, that, that is not diabetic, right? So if you can bring your A1C down below 5.7%, you're not diabetic anymore. That doesn't mean that you're cured, but you're not diabetic anymore. Of course, you may have type 1 diabetes, you may have type 2 diabetes, you may have type 3 diabetes. Sometimes we call this LADA or type 1 and a half. You know, the, the, the name can change, but the bottom line is it's a diabetic, diabetes between type 1 and type 2. But depending on your diabetes, the beating diabetes is possible. Now, beating diabetes has many meanings, right? So we are not talking about here like diabetes vanishing, like a, like a common cold or coronavirus, COVID-19 going off the surface of the world. You know, diabetes is not a disease like that. It is very controllable. It can put into remission and it can stay in remission for a long time but it's not like a common cold or a virus. So people don't understand that part. And some people think that the diabetes is just a disease of food uh, or sugar. That's not true either. So people read on the internet or on different resources and they end up coming up with their own ideas and thoughts and they're trying to influence other people based on what they think it is without a medical degree or without a deep thought and understanding and studying the disease. What, you, what you're saying on the internet is affecting a lot of people. So if you're not really necessarily a professional, if you do not specialize in this, if you're not, not a medical doctor, if, you're not, if, you're, if you did not go through this extensive education and training, we call medicine practice of medicine for a reason. We do not call it science of medicine, right? So we practice science because diabetes or any medical topic is not an entire science. That is because the presentation of the disease can be different from person to person. Since you're all familiar with the COVID-19 or coronavirus right now, as you can imagine, the same virus can kill somebody and somebody else may not even have symptoms. So as a result, you know, we do not just write the same prescription for everybody. Trust me, I am telling you the truth. So my patients actually, my current patients in my practice get a lot of benefits from these videos. Uh, but I want these videos to be available to everyone. Why not, right? So if I can serve other people without asking anything and they are just thankful, that's good enough for me. Okay guys, so basically, if you have just got diagnosed with, with diabetes and doctor told you that, hey, your A1C is high, your A1C is 13%, your A1C is 15%. A lot of times people come to me, by the time they get referred to me, their A1C is already down. Because it's like hitting the wall and people understand that, oh, they've been eating a lot of carbs, they've been, like, they've not been really caring about themselves, they, haven't, they have not been exercising and so forth. So a lot of people, when they hear the diabetes diagnosis, they get shocked and they take extreme measures typically. All right, so what happens is that immediately A1C goes down, which is great, but that happens in the early course of diabetes. So sometimes, you know, I give this car examples all the time, although I'm not a really a car guy <laughs> by any means, but if you see the engine light and you do something early, you're probably gonna recover pretty quick. Your car is going to uh, be okay, but if you kind of wait and let it go and on and on and on, and you may actually end up damaging other, other parts in your car, and you may end up paying way more for the damages, uh, for the negligence and so forth. So our bodies are, you know, kind of similar, although way more complicated. So 
Um, we sometimes when we diagnose people with diabetes, actually damage is already done. So diagnosis of diabetes actually is something that, that is at the end of the story. It starts with insulin resistance and you end up with the diabetes. Most people, by the time they have diabetes, they already have heart disease. Not everybody, but a lot of people end up with heart disease quite early on. And just because it just, we need to tell these people way ahead of time when your A1C is like 5.8, 5.7, 5.9, hey, you gotta do something aggressive right now. Don't wait your A1C to be 15. So this happens all the time, right? So people come to me and they say, Doc, my A1C was like 5.9 or 6%. And I said, okay, fine, I'm just pre-diabetic, I'm borderline, I'll be okay. And the next thing they go to the doctor six months later, the doctor says, what did you do? Your A1C is 15%. This happens all the time. Your body gives up. Your insulin goes up and up and up. And at some point, uh, your body will say, you know, I'm done making insulin. Basically, it goes into almost like a crisis situation where your body just shuts off insulin. Now, at that point, if you can reduce your carbs drastically, you will temporarily recover from diabetes. Now, I get a lot of comments saying that, oh, what you're saying has no meaning because I brought my A1C down from 15% down to 5% and I, I don't need medication as well. That may be true for you, good for you. And that is the case most of the time when people just get diagnosed and they still have a lot of insulin reserves, but what they don't understand is it's not going to stay the same. So um, remember this, this is not necessarily two times two equals four. There's a lot of things that contribute in your blood sugar management. Now. If you have a certain amount of insulin production that your body is capable of and that is genetically determined most of the time. So I'm asking to those people who, uh, who say that, oh, I don't eat any carbs, diabetes is a sugar disease, so I got the carbs, my diabetes is gone. There are a lot of people who eat 500 grams of carbs every day and they don't have diabetes. Or they are like even in their 50s and 60s, they're overweight and they're obese, they don't have any diabetes. So how do you explain that, right? So explanation is that they're genetically, they are not prone to have diabetes. They can make as much insulin as they want. Now this, they're gonna stay obese, they're gonna probably have some other complications from obesity, but they will not have diabetes. So it is genetically determined how much insulin you can make. Now how much insulin you can make has a meaning because the amount of the the fat and muscle tissue that insulin takes care of also is very important. So if you have a lot of muscle and fat, mostly fat, and you become insulin resistant because these fat cells create, as we discussed in the previous video, the inflammation, and as a result, your insulin production goes down together, but also insulin is not able to take care of the demand in the, in the fat cells because your fat cells are just stubborn and doesn't want to deal with insulin and insulin tries to go up and so forth eventually fails and diabetes happens. Now if you take aggressive measures like I said, go down on the carbs and initially it's fine but what is not known by many people is that diabetes is a progressive disease. Once it starts, it keeps going on. Like a lot of chronic diseases actually like that. So like dementia, once it starts, it doesn't stay that way. You keep going down. The medications and everything like that we give for dementia is just to slow the progression. So once the damage starts in an organ, that is inevitable that that organ is gonna go down. So you basically reduce the carbs drastically to almost to none. Of course your body doesn't have to make insulin. Doesn't mean that you don't have diabetes your capacity to make insulin is still low. It's like saying, uh, well, I, you know, I've been spending a lot of money and now I'm spending now $20,000 a month and um, you know, I'm not making enough, I'm, I'm making $15,000 and now I'm spending $20,000. You're in debt and everybody's on you, they're trying to collect your, their debt and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden say, I'm done. Okay, I'm selling my house, I'm selling everything, I'm going to a small house, I'm gonna start spending $5,000 a month. Suddenly you look like you're $10,000 rich, right? But actually, you're not any rich, you're just like, you're making the same money. <laughs> it's just that you're not spending as much. Same thing with diabetes, guys. Your body already is under attack. Your pancreas is not making enough insulin, but, 
if you don't need as much insulin, you will still be okay. You can, you can still go with the flow, you know, go for years without needing any other medication. That is great. We always support that if you start exercising, you cut down on the carbs, you know, your diabetes will be in remission for a long time. But this doesn't mean that if you just cut down on the carbs and start exercising, your A1C goes down to five, that's great. But if you don't, don't maintain that, okay, or if you start engaging in high risk behaviors like eating high carbs, going partying, stuff like that, that's going to come right back on because diabetes didn't go away. You just were able to manage it by reducing the demand on your body. A lot of times what happens is those people, they hit the wall, they get excited, they say, okay, I'm gonna change all my lifestyle. They do great, and then once it comes and I tell them, okay, well, let's see you in six months since you're looking motivated and so forth. And a lot of times those people come back with a way higher A1C. So here the key is, guys, is being accountable. So we are human beings, right? So we get distracted, we get pulled away. Uh, there are a lot of people around us eating this fun, carby stuff, and you're the one, you're the weird one saying, oh, I don't eat carbs, you know, don't touch me, you know. I, I have no fun in my life, I, I'm, I'm not gonna eat carbs, I'm not gonna drink, whatever. Great, but it can only last so long. So instead of, you know, taking aggressive extreme measures, you know, you should be taking measures that actually will fit your lifestyle for a long time. So it, just choose the middle road. Just just reduce your carbs, yes, great, but going no carbs is most of the time is not easy to maintain. Plus a lot of healthy carbs have a lot of nutrients and minerals. So for example, people say, you know, yeah, well, I eat uh, oatmeal, my blood sugar spikes. Of course it will spike, it, it has a spike. If your pancreas is not making any insulin, it's gonna go up, but also depends on how much oatmeal you're eating. If you're eating a bowl of like this, your, your sugar is gonna go up. So it's not just the food to blame, it's also how much carbs you're eating. Plus, if you took a walk after that oatmeal, your blood sugar wouldn't spike. So don't blame the oatmeal. So blame yourself for blood sugar spike because you're actually not doing anything, for example, uh, after eating a breakfast or just sitting on a desk job you're not even moving around, of course it's gonna go up. That's the basics of the disease. So you have high demand, you have a minimal production of insulin, it's not going to match. Now, again, we're not playing the blame game here, but I'm trying to tell here is don't just blame the food and just don't just turn your head away from all, all the foods. Yes, there are some foods that you shouldn't be touching at all, but there are a lot of healthy carbs. People say, oh, you shouldn't be eating any carbs. That is not true. As long as you can eat the carbs and keep the blood sugar normal, you can. And there are a lot of ways you can still have healthy carbs in your diet, get all the benefits from those carbs, the fiber, because again, think about this guys. When we treat diabetes, we do not just treat numbers. That's, that's a lot of people get hung up on. They say, oh, my blood sugar is going up, my blood sugar is going up. The diabetes is not a blood sugar number disease. Diabetes is a metabolism disease. You have to understand that. Your sugar going up is the end of the story. By the time you get there, you have a lot of insulin resistance, a lot of cholesterol problems, blood pressure can kick in. This is a metabolic syndrome. Diabetes is the end result of it. So you have to really think that way. It's not just blood sugar going up and down. So the outcome, so why do we treat diabetes, right? Why? Because we want to avoid damage to the body. We want to avoid cardiovascular disease. We want to avoid strokes and heart attacks. A lot of people die from strokes and heart attacks before they go blind or before they go on a kidney dialysis. So you have to really think like this. That's how a doctor thinks. So when patients come to us with their own agenda, their, their goal is, I want to bring my blood sugar down to 100. I don't care how you do it. It's not just about bringing blood sugars down. It's about getting your whole health together. I call this holistic. You don't have to use herbal medications to be a holistic doctor. Holistic doctor is a doctor who looks at your entire body, and when a doctor prescribes you a regimen, a diet regimen or a medication regimen, they try to 
give you the best possible benefit from all the angles, not just from one angle. So unfortunately, some doctors also do not understand that. They also um, get caught with the same problem, or I call this a disease, the brain disease, where your entire goal for diabetes is to bring the blood sugar down and don't care about the rest of it. So as a result, for example, there are some medications that bring the blood sugar down but cause cancer. Duh, there are some blood sugar medications that will bring the blood sugar down but will give you a heart attack. Come on, right? There are some blood sugar medications that will bring the blood sugar down but it will cause a weight gain. So what's the point? So again, when we choose medications, as a doctor, we, we are, cho at least I am choosing the medication that my, pati my patient will get the most benefit. Now, again, some people will say, oh, stop the carbs and you don't need any medication. That's not true. If you're not making enough insulin, right, so you may be making, let's say, 50 insulin, and you were eating 100 grams of carbs, and you brought your carbs down to nothing, you still make insulin, you're good to go. But somebody else may not be making the same amount of insulin you're making, so as a result, those poor people, they'll say, I sometimes go fasting for like day, for 24 hours a day, and my blood sugar keep climbing. So what do you say to those people? What do you say to those people? They have insulin resistance. It has to be taken care of. Sometimes it's just the way it is that your body is not making enough insulin, even, if, even without eating, your blood sugar keeps going up. There are ways to approach this. Sometimes we, um, I call this like a SWAT attack. Basically, I attack diabetes. I get it under control with a combination of medications. Get it under control if you're not able to do it with a diet and exercise. Diet and exercise is the first thing, right? Cut the carbs, exercise if you can. Now, a lot of people, there are people from India, people from China, people from Middle East, people Hispanics. You cannot just tell them cut the carbs. What are you talking about? they live on the carbs so you have to understand the reality of people the socioeconomics there are a lot of people who cannot afford those healthy foods guys you just tell them throw things like hey, eat avocado eat this eat that how do you know they can right there are a lot of things that as a doctor i have to understand patient i cannot just say people uh, oh you know what you're eating you just go eat good stuff you'll be good most people cannot afford that uh, now You'll say, oh, well, they have to cut this. And this. I understand, but the thing is, they're not sometimes as well-educated. Not everybody is like you're watching a YouTube video right now. You're trying to educate yourself, but not everybody is the same. So I have to consider as a doctor that, okay, what can he do? What can she do? What can we do together? What is doable? What's not doable? How motivated are you? So motivation is a big thing. Some people are health freaks. They are crazy about any food and every food. And some people, you know, they don't really care. Now, I still have to take care of everybody. And I cannot yell at people for eating carbs. You know, if I, I can only do, okay, wait, let's, let's negotiate. You know, instead of eating 100 grams of carbs, let's go down to 60. Some people say, oh, we cannot tell people to eat 60 grams. They have to eat nothing. Well, okay, guys, calm down. If, if, if you can bring somebody from 100 grams down to 60 grams, that's a success. You have to take it like that, okay? And, and then once they eat 60 grams, they see the results, they get motivated. We have to create the motivation in people. That is how it works. That's we call this motivational interviewing. We ask people what they can do, what they are willing to do, right? Um, what are they capable of doing? And what do they expect from results? Why do they have to do this? What's the point of controlling diabetes? Um, what's the point of taking this medication? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of times, people get upset and frustrated because they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, nobody talks to them. Doctors don't tell them why they're taking this medication. They just say, you have diabetes, just take this medicine. Or you have diabetes, just stop eating carbs. And uh, most of the time, people get confused, like, what is the doctor talking about? You know, my entire family, everybody eats carbs day and night. How am I going to just say no to everybody and just have, I'll have my own salad and everybody else will enjoy their pasta? <laughs> Italians, right? So we negotiate with them. We say, okay, well, you have to eat pasta? Okay. Let, instead of eating pasta every day, how about cutting down to two times or three times a week? Let's see the results. And most importantly, accountability. We do remote monitoring. So when I put people into my remote monitoring program, 
they immediately improve. Why? Because we work as a team, and I tell them what to do and how to take medications, how to reduce medications, how to get rid of medications. They, they log in all this information into our uh, application, and I can see what they're eating and so forth. And in a friendly way, we just discuss back and forth. Our educators help the patients. So it is a process where people need a lot of support. If you bring that team approach to every diabetic patient's life, then people will, first of all, will not feel alone. Feeling alone is horrible with diabetes. When everybody else is eating whatever they want and you are the uh, weird one, that's very hard. So at least somebody's on your side, right? So we do that, guys. And of course, you know, educating, educating, edu education is the key in everything. If you understand what the diabetes is overall and how to treat diabetes, how to eat right, uh, and again, this is very individualized process. It's not just one size fits all at all. So I bring my patients A1C down always, but how we do it depends on the patient motivation, depends on uh, their lifestyle, depends on their financial status, social status, etc. Sometimes it takes us two weeks, sometimes it takes us uh, a year to bring the blood sugars down, and how intensive we look at the uh, patients determines the outcome, and I think that is the key. So anybody's blood sugar can be controlled either with lifestyle changes or with medications and both, etc. So there is no reason to not to beat diabetes. You can beat the diabetes. And it's not just about what you're eating. It's about who you are dealing with, who's your coach, who's your doctor, what is your medication regimen, how are you managing it, what do you know about your medication, a lot of times, patients with diabetes don't even know what they're on. And I tell them, friendly, in a friendly way, I'm like, look, you have diabetes, you need to understand what diabetes is, you need to understand what medications you're on, you need to understand why you're taking them, and you need to understand how to take them off. So if you don't care enough about your diabetes and your medication regimen or your diet or exercise, beating diabetes is not going to be possible. You can control it in a relative way. We still bring people down to less than seven. We just, you know, if somebody is not motivated and they don't want to do anything, they just have their own ways and they don't want to change anything in their lifestyle, we have medications, but then they complain that medications are expensive. Or even herbal medications we give sometimes, they say it's expensive. Of course, anything that works is expensive. Unfortunately, in the United States, uh, we are um, the pioneers. We are the inventors, um, but then of course everybody is also trying to make profit from their inventions, from their treatments. Even herbal treatments that I recommend, you know, is not is not cheap because I wouldn't recommend something that's not going to work. You know, there are a lot of like glucose support stuff that you buy for twenty dollars, they just don't work, and I don't recommend them. Um, but so as a result, guys, so the, you know, if you want to save money and, and cost, yes. Diet and exercise, accountability, being remotely monitored is the key. That's how we beat diabetes. In a population regimen, also in a, in a population management, also, if everybody was being monitored, and everybody was being coached, and everybody was giving was given the right medications if they needed medications, um, then everybody can beat diabetes. I think it is problem of motivation. It's a problem of uh, a workforce to help these people. But my mission, my goal is to actually promote that remote patient monitoring so that we can touch a lot more lives. We can uh, help people staying accountable, help people staying motivated, and that's how we beat diabetes. Again, guys, Please uh, write down your comments. Please do not give medical advice, especially if you're not a medical doctor. If you like the video, remember to give a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next video.